Now that we've gone ahead, we've got our group set, we've got our 2D plan, we're ready to go record our basic cues. So I'm going to run through not only just recording a cue, but also the different types we have in Onyx and, and some smart ways to lay them out. So first, let's build our first cue. I'm just going to grab everybody, bring them to full, try to blind myself, then go ahead. Do some presets. And we'll call that a cue. So in Onyx, recording cues is very similar to a lot of other lighting consoles which you may be familiar with. Just press record. And then we can press on the screen button where it shows our playbacks at the bottom. We can press on the physical playback button, on the button below any of these sub playback faders, or on the actual sub playback buttons, or the main playback buttons. In this case, we're just going to pop this on fader one. We're going to call it magenta blue example. And we would press enter, but we're going to talk for a quick second about cue list types. So we can see here, when we're going to record, we've got six cue list types that we can see and one that hides from us but is incredibly valuable. The six cue list types are cue list, submaster, chase, inhibitive, timecode, override, and then cue blender, which is a special type of override. Each of these cue list types in Onyx have their own function and their own way of working. Now, if you've come from other lighting consoles, you may not be used to having so many cue list types, and you might wonder, why do I need so many types? Well, it's very similar to what you've been working with, but instead of having one type of cue list that you record, and then a bunch of different settings that govern how the fader fades, what the buttons do, um, whether the intensities are HTP or LTP, the priority, Without having all of these different settings and, and toggles for time code and whatever else, they're neatly organized in these seven preset types, six of which we can get right here. The seventh, the cube blender, is under override. And we'll talk about that a little more. So for this example, I'm just going to choose the regular red cue list. Now, it has the yellow box around it, which shows me it's selected. So I could type, tap on any of the different types or I could just press enter and we're good to go. Let's go ahead and I'm not going to use that. I'm just going to press delete and press the button below it. Press enter, make that go away. Perfect. So when I'm laying things out, I'm first going to go ahead and lay out a couple intensities for myself. I like to do that first. And so here I could just snap and release if I had played the cue or in the case of it being in the programmer, I can press clear twice and begin laying out my intensities. Now, on an NX4, I like to put my main intensities on the first page of my main faders. You could also put them on the sub playbacks. Either way, we'll go ahead, select our lights, record, press the cue list, and then in this case, I'm going to use submasters. Now, I'm going to type my name and my cue list type before I go and hit enter. We can change it later, but it's easiest to do it right now. So I'm going to go and say, name of my light. Perfect. I meant to make that a submaster. I didn't. That's OK. I can go ahead, double tap here, press my cog, and change my cue list type on the options. So I wanted a submaster. Perfect. We're good to go. Now I've got control, ready to go to the next fixture. Got my side strips. Pop them up to full. Record as a cue here. Give it a name. Make it a submaster. Good to go. Clear. Check it. Awesome. 
record, same process. This time I ex actually had selected Submaster before, so it's still selected. Clear, grab my darts. Perfect, good to go. So now I've got my submasters for all my fixtures and I can begin laying out some other cues. Now, like any lighting console, the way you lay out cues is a completely open architecture. And so in this case, I'm just gonna build some different looks really quick. Go to my pan tilt presets. So my darts, I have X's, put that over here. And I'm going to make that a cue list. Then I've got my fan position. Do that next, give it a name, press enter. Then I'll go ahead, I'll play one of them. Grab those darts and grab some colors on these guys maybe. I'll we'll go ahead and do our position actually on our Van Goghs. I like that organization a little better. Second position. Good to go. Awesome. Now we'll go ahead, maybe I pop in some gobos on the next row. Second gobo, we're in rows of two, so two gobos sounds great. Got that laid out nice there. Perfect. Now we're gonna do some different color looks. I think I'm gonna do two rows of colors here on my six sub playback buttons. So we'll go here and grab our darts. Red, gonna name it, always stay organized. Accidentally hit record, so we'll just press clear, then hit our actual color green. Now hit record, green, blue. Magenta. Yellow. white, go ahead and build my next row out, so this time we'll grab all our strip lights, turn just those on with our sub, second row, You may notice as I'm recording that the last playback that I recorded always has the light on. That's just the selector light, just tells us that that cue list is selected because it's the last one we pressed. Nothing major, if you select another cue list, it'll move. This would be third color, we went to magenta. to yellow. It does help you keep track when you're coming across these buttons, which I do like. What color is this anyways? Yellow. Perfect. Now we've got some things laid out there. Let's lay out a couple overrides. So as mentioned before, we started off with some basic submasters. They're gonna control intensity and intensity only. We then went ahead, actually before that our example, our first example was a regular cue list. With the regular cue list, if I go ahead, just as an example, put in some intensity, some color, some position, record that on a cue here. If we play that one, 
we see that it behaves like a normal cue list on a lot of other lighting consoles where we bring that fader up and down, it's modifying the intensity level, everything else fades in when we press play. So things like position, things like color aren't affected by the fader level. But the other cue list types like overrides can offer us a lot of flexibility in our programming. Here's an example of an override. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm just going to stop this cue, delete it off this cue list, and then I'm going to go ahead and build an override. So overrides are great for anything you want to have a variable control over on a fader. Okay, so maybe we grab these Van Goghs, we go ahead, we go to beam, we've got a zoom here. I'm going to set this to wide, record, we'll go ahead and record our zoom over here, and boom, we've got that now on a fader. Now it's a regular cue list, I set it to an override when I'm recording, or I can go back later and adjust it. Now if I clear, I have zoom control variable on a fader. Now the thing about overrides and what you're going to learn in Onyx is that everything in Onyx is a parameter. Not only the regular parameters like intensity and colors, but also the fanning, the effects, the dialos pixel mapping parameters, everything. So overrides can be really powerful because they allow us to stack things on here like different effects and um, different colors, things like that be able to get that variable control over anything you want control over, whether it's a real regular real world parameter or something inside of the console, like an effect speed or an effect size. It really opens up a lot of possibilities for playback live and on the fly. So now that we've got our zoom there, we'll go ahead and build an inhibitive fader. Now in this example, I'm using submasters as my intensities. And in general, that's great. Another way, though, to manage intensities is maybe to have them turn on in a regular cue list and use an inhibitive to pull them back. Or maybe, as this example goes, I will go to my Van Goghs and I will select the middle two, take them to full, record that as an inhibited fader. Name it. Make sure it's an inhibitive. And so now, if I needed to at different parts of my show, once I've cleared, I can control the output of just those center two. Maybe there's times where the presenter walks into the middle, or for some reason I just need to dim those down a little bit compared to the outer two. I've got control of all four in a linear fashion on the submaster, but the inhibitive gives me just these two that I'm able to work with. Awesome. Now we'll go ahead and build a few more buttons. We also have chases available in Onyx, and they can be built to make some nice chasing type effects. For a quick chase example, I'll go to my every two darts group. I will take the first half to full, record that to a chase. Then I'm going to go ahead, press next, take that to full. Go last, take my first half to zero, got my second half, record, make a quick chase. Then maybe we go ahead on our chase and we're going to take all of them, record that as a third step, take them out, record that as a fourth. Now we clear, we've got our chase up, if we play it, it's going to chase through. Now chases in Onyx have a lot of really great tweaks that we're able to fine tune. So if we double tap on this and pull up our cue list options, we can see one thing we've got here, our fade percent. I'm going to work with that first. If I select in that box, I'll highlight this with my trackball, take it to zero, rerun that chase, and now we see it's a chase that's chasing with no fade at all. Before we were doing a 100% fade, but we could also go in the middle 50%, and now it's a combination where for half its time it fades in and out, the other half it's chasing. We also have options here to run it forward, backwards, 
It is going to stop in the middle to bounce front to end of the cues and then back or to go random. We also have tap sync options. We can use our timing and we're able to tap here and tap right on the top button here. Make it go fast, make it go slow. If we toggle on the global rate, we'll also follow the beat function, which is available as an F key, also available uh, on the NX Touch or on an on-screen side item. Perfect. If we like what we got, we can go ahead and close that window, and we've got a good chase. Now, we've got a variety of cues laid out. This isn't a full show by any means, but it's a great start. So we've got our different lights, got the ability to bring in different color options on different types of fixtures, change them as we please. And if we want to run live, as we are here, run a little bit of timing, we can go over here to rate and take our global fade speed. Maybe we take that to minimum. Now we press some things to toggle, pop that to maximum, they fade. Or we just toggle live on the fly, effectively disabling the fade or scaling it as we wish. We're able to change live and on the fly how we transition our different groups of lights here on the NX4. Now that we've looked at the basics of creating cues, I want to dive deeper and talk about creating some different effects. Obviously, static cues bumped quickly can look cool, and we use lots of static cues in our shows, but effects are a big part of programming a show, so that's where we're going to dive next.